Good morning. Good morning. Uh, happy to be here. I want to make sure my camera started. Yep. All right. Make sure we get this up later. So, uh, over the next several weeks, we said eight to ten on Tuesday mornings, we're going to be going over the iPad. And as we do so, uh, I'd like us to think and talk about uh, a few questions, a couple of questions over the next couple of weeks. Number one, how can the iPad change the way you teach and the way you learn and your students learn? And the second question being, what ways can this become a tool in your classroom? Okay. Um, we're not going to hit those this morning, but I'm going to come back to them several times over the next several weeks. Okay. Uh, so today, and for today and next week, we're going to do just kind of a basic overview. Um, we just kind of threw these out at you guys. Uh, several months ago, and some of you are probably probably comfortable with them, some uh, maybe not quite so much, and so we're going to go and start with the basics, okay? Uh, and I'm going to let you guys kind of tell me what, what you know and don't know as we go along, all right? So let's talk about the buttons on the devices first. I'm going to take my, my case here, uh-oh, I didn't mean to shut it off. Okay, so there are basically one, two, three, four, five buttons on the iPad. Okay. Uh, there's a button on the front of the iPad, the circular button. Anybody know what that's called? The what? Oh, yeah, right, exactly right. That is the home button. Okay. So the button on the front. Yep, the round circular button. Okay. Yeah, there. That is the home button. Okay. Home button has a couple functions. Number one, it will take you out of any program that you have running and back to a home screen. Okay. You can also double click on the home button to do a, a few things. Okay. So if I'm on my first screen of applications, for example, I double click it, it will take me one screen to the left, which takes me to the search screen. Also, if you double click on the home button, watch my screen as I press on it twice. Uh, right there. You'll see that the screen rises, and it shows me a little dock. Okay? That dock is the recently used applications. Okay? Now, if I hadn't cleared this out after Sunday after my grandkids were over, <laughs> this I, I could swipe probably for about 15 minutes and not get to the end of the apps. But I got in and cleared it out after they left. I also cleaned my screen with disinfectant <laughs> a couple of times. Oh. <laughs> okay? So again, I just pressed it once to go back to my home screen. And, and I'm swiping, and you've all got the swipe right and left down, right? Okay. So, with the home button, whatever screen I'm on, okay, if I'm on one of my application screens, if I click it once, it will take me back to the first page of apps. Okay. So if I'm way at the end here, and I want to get immediately back to the first page of applications, which is where I keep my most popular stuff, the stuff I like the most, I just tap it once, and it takes me back to that first screen. Okay. If I tap it once again, then, that will send it to the search screen. Tap it again one more time, it will take me back to that first screen. The double tap, again, brings up this little application dock. That does not mean, the pro again, does not mean the programs are running. It's just my most recently used applications. Right. On that screen, I can swipe to the right, and if I go all the way to the right, I have another screen. Okay. When I do that, it takes me back to my home page. Okay, so tap it twice, click it twice, really quickly, and it should bring up that little... 
app application dock. Okay? And then if you just swipe the dock once to the right, there we go. Now swipe that to the right. Right down on the dock. Oh, okay. Swipe. Yeah. Swipe, that's why yeah. swipe it one the dock itself once to the right. Yeah, swipe swipe in the dock itself. All right. You have a few controls here then. For example, if I were to tap my play button, I have no idea what's gonna start playing, maybe nothing. But I didn't have iTunes running. So there's nothing to play right now. But, oh, there we go. We're going to get some George Harrison here. So I can stop it. I can fast forward to the next song. I can rewind to the previous song. Okay. Um, also on this screen, I have a volume control slider on the right here. It works for me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I also have a brightness button, which you won't see on the screen there, but on my or on your iPad, if you, that you can adjust the brightness there. Okay. Um, an advantage to turning down the brightness is your battery will last a little longer. Okay. Um, I seldom, if ever, turn my brightness down. But can't have you keep that. it in the middle or all the way to the left? Um, I keep mine right. all the way to the right. I keep mine oh, bright, right. as bright can be. Okay. But that's because my eyes are so horrible. Okay. Um, now, depending on another setting you may have made, this icon on the left, this gray icon, may be a little different. For mine right now, it is a mute button. Although it's not muting much. Okay. If, if you have a, another setting, a, your button may look a little different. It may look like a little a circular button, okay? That is the rotation lock. So if you if you don't want it to switch, you know, especially if you're reading like if you're reading your books, okay, and you move it at all and it switches and you're getting going into epileptic fits or whatever. Okay? Um, tap that go in here, tap that, and it will lock the rotation, whichever direction you're in. And I'll show you where to adjust that, switch that back and forth in just a minute. Okay. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of that. I'm gonna tap my home button one more time. And just go back to my normal screen. Okay. The other buttons on the iPad. There are basically three buttons on the side. There's actually one. Once there's actually switches on the side. One is a uh, press down switch. I have my switch here set to do my rotation lock, which is why when I go into the dock here, this is a mute button. You can change this button so that it becomes the rotation lock button, and like mine is set right now, and then that icon will become the mute button. And I'll show you where to change that. The top one, the middle one does that? Yep, the top middle one that slides. Okay. The other button on the side there, the rocker button, is your volume controls. Okay. Now, if you turn turning the volume down, and this is another quick way to mute the device, and this is why I set my other switch here to be my rotation lock, is because you only need to press down for a couple of seconds and it mutes all the way. It, it, it goes down a couple of spots and then it goes all the way to mute. Okay. It doesn't turn up that way, you have to... Crank it all the way up. Do you have a question? Oh, that's on the right side. Crank to the top. Okay. And finally, 
The button on the top is the sleep wake button. Oh, you see, if you press that button while your iPad's on, it puts it to sleep. Okay. You press it again, turns it back on. So when it's sleeping, it doesn't use battery? No. Or at least very little. Is this an earphone? That hole? That the hole is, is a headphone jack. Yeah. Good, that's a good question. The hole on top? Yeah. On the opposite side of the sleep wake button is a headphone jack. Plug headphones in or speakers. So you can plug this into your audio enhancement system. Okay. <clears throat> okay, questions so far? Where's the audio? Where's the headphone? The headphone jack is okay. up the top here. It looks so small. Okay. Let's look at the settings for a few minutes. Oh, well, before we do that, let's go back. Where, where stuff is on your screen is completely up to you, okay? Uh, we're, we'll talk in just a minute about creating folders, okay? But for right now, I'm going to just tap and hold on one of my programs here. And when I do that, you see they start jiggling, okay? It's the jello mold effect or whatever, I don't know. It's the jiggles. <clears throat> this bottom row of icons is called your home applications, okay? and but you can change those out if you want. That home row of applications is on every screen. So let me get back out of this for a minute. See that that does not change. So my iTunes, Calendar, Mail, Photos, Safari, and Settings are always there. You can put whatever you want in there. So again, the way you do that, I'm going to press and hold again on one of the applications. Now I can take and I can drag any application out of that and drag any application in. How many can you have down? You can have up to six. And then you just press the home button again to stop them jiggling. <coughs> What's that? Why do you do it? Uh, it's just a visual sign that you can now move applications around. Okay. So now I'm on my last page of applications, and there's only one application there. And I've got them jiggling. Once on the ones on the screen, whoops, I didn't want to do that. You'll see an X on top of the application. If I tap that X, that's how I delete applications. If I don't want an application on my iPad anymore, I can delete it. It gives me a confirmation box. Are you sure you want to delete it? Yes, I really don't. I'm going to cancel that. You can also move apps from page to page while they're in jiggle mode here. So I'm going to click and drag and put this app here. Okay. <clears throat> and then you can create folders with your apps. So. I have, I keep most of my apps except for maybe my home ones here. I keep all of my apps in folders. Okay. So to create a folder, again, you get them in jiggle mode here. And then you drag one application on top of another. And that creates a folder. Depending on what applications you're dragging together, it will suggest a name for the folder. Okay. This one, because I put two games together, automatically called it a game folder. And say, okay. I just tap the folder, close it, and then I hit my home folder again, and we're good to go. Okay. I can take applications out of one folder and put them in another. Okay, so let's say I've already got a folder here called Arcade, so I actually want these in that folder. So again, once I'm jiggling, I just come, drop it out of that folder, and drop it onto this folder. Do the same thing with this one. And sometimes they'll move around like that and get a little frustrating. It just takes a little bit of practice. But that allows you 
to, again, group certain types of applications. There are hundreds of ways to do it. Um, I group my, by kind of what the applications do somewhat. Uh, other people do it different ways. So it's completely up to you. Okay. So if it's supposed to keep going up like that, then you're reading um, <laughs> Yes. Yes. Because yes. when I was reading my book, it would go off. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll show you how to change that right now. Okay. All right. Now we're going to go into settings. Okay. So if you'll find the settings icon, wherever it is on your iPad, it's this one that with the look, looks like the gears. It's on the lower right on my screen. And we're going to go through okay. some of these settings. <coughs> and again, over the next couple of weeks, we'll go through most of these. But I want to start in general. So if you'll go to the, on the settings on the left, if you'll find general and tap on that. You're, you're already on. Yep. It, it, I think it defaults to the general, actually. All right. So in the general settings, in the, in the first section of three there, you've got about, so tap on that, it'll give you information about your iPad. Okay. For example, it'll tell you what the capacity is, then it'll also tell you how much capacity you have left. You can also rename your iPad from there if you want, and so forth. That mainly just gives you information. Software update. If, and I would, ex I would anticipate within the next three to four weeks, there will be a fairly significant software upgrade. Once that comes out, if you go into the software update, number one, you'll probably get a pop-up notification for it. Okay. But um, if not, once that comes out, I'll let you guys know. But you just come in, you can come in here to software update, and it'll say there's an update available. Please make sure you have your iPod plugged or iPad plugged in, and they can tap start. And then do we have to have a code? Yeah. What's that? Do we have to have a code for that? Password? Yes. And we'll go through that. Usage, again, tell, gives you information about your storage. This is where you can turn off the battery percentage up in the little top little menu area up there. I like to keep mine on because I like to know how far down I'm getting. Where is usage? I'm in the one screen. Right below it. Okay, so in the general section here, the third, yeah, general. third one down. Let's say usage. Look at general again. Yeah, there you go. There is usage. Okay. All right, so the next single one there, the fourth one down, is sounds. So if you tap on sounds. Is all this supposed to come up when you get right for usage? Yes. Okay. It's going to show you how much, how much space each app is taking up. Okay, so under sounds, uh, this is where you can set different sounds for different events. So for example, when you get new mail, I don't have anything set there, so I'm going to go in there and say, all right, when I get new email, I want to hear fanfare. <coughs> How did you get into that from the general? Okay, so from general, it's, into, it's sound, so the fourth one down. And you'll see a, a variety of things that you can set different sounds for. <laughs> so I'm going to stop for a minute and let you play. <laughs> see, I can't be taught. <laughs> can you hook a phone up to that? Is that why there's a ringtone? Um, no. But there are some applications that will kind of actually let you make phone calls. Is that the FaceTime time? 
Uh, I'll FaceTime if you want, uh, Skype. Also down at the bottom of those, there's two on-off buttons. One says lock sounds. And I'm not really sure what that does. But the other one is for keyboard clicks. So if you want the on-screen keyboard to click as you type, which I like, because I like that at least audio feedback, because you don't get tactile feedback. Um, so I keep that on. OK, I'm going to go back. And the next one is network. Uh, this is one place you can set your Wi-Fi. There's a specific Wi-Fi setting area, so we're not going to deal with that right now. But and it should just be you can set right? your Wi-Fi there as well. What's that? You can't, but but as you go in, if you go into like to a McDonald's, you can go in and select their Wi-Fi, connect to their network, and then. It just automatically yeah. shows but it. Just asks you, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah it just asks you. It just shows. Mine automatically shows on. Yeah, yeah. Because you, once you set, once you set it, like for home or that, when you at home it automatically picks up on the network. Yes. Um, Bluetooth. What's that? You have to set that for The first time, yeah. Okay, Bluetooth is, is if you have a Bluetooth uh, headset or a Bluetooth keyboard. I have a Bluetooth keyboard that I use, an external keyboard, except I lost the end to it, so I can't use it right now. Kelly, would you give us some advice on the quality? There's so many. You know, the one they offered us in our ed tech class is $100, but I've seen some for less. Should we be avoiding certain brands? You know, um, I bought, for Christmas, I bought my wife an iHome one that was on sale. She found it on sale at Radio Shack, actually, for like $39. That I think is every bit as good as the Zag case. Um, the Bluetooth keyboard I use is just the Apple Bluetooth keyboard. It works on your, with your laptops or desktop as well. As, like I said, I lost the end to it, so it's kind of purposeless right now. Oh. <coughs> but... Uh, so you connect an external keyboard so you get some tactile feedback to it. Like this. Right, but it's right here. Will it recognize this wireless one? Yeah. What's that? Will it recognize the wireless one like my iMac does? Oh, if, if, only if it's Bluetooth. As long as it's Bluetooth, yes. Would this be Bluetooth considered Bluetooth? That's Bluetooth. So if we go to the Apple store and buy that one. Yeah, just ask for the Bluetooth wireless keyboard. And you pull it out and it starts... You start pull it out. Again, you come into Bluetooth here and turn Bluetooth on. And then the first time, you'll see my, my device comes up and says K. Dumont's keyboard. You have to, with Bluetooth, you have to pair the devices, but it's fairly simple to do. It'll walk you through it. It says it's not connected right now, and I can't connect because I can't get juice to flow through it because I don't have the other end to keep the batteries in. Okay? But once I, once I paired it, every time I go in, all I have to do basically is just turn both devices on, make sure the Bluetooth's on, and it syncs right up. So since we have a discount agreement with Office, Depot. Do you think we could do a group? Um, they don't carry the Apple Bluetooth keyboard. Oh, you'd have to look and see what they might have. Okay. Okay, iTunes Wi-Fi Sync. We're not going to worry about that right now. Uh, <coughs> and just coming back to your question now, why the screen goes off so often. That's in this auto lock thing. So. Well, actually, it's a couple of places. But one thing is, uh, if you set the auto lock, it's probably set for like about two minutes. And if you don't touch the screen at all, it's going to go off. And it's going to lock and you have to turn it back on. So you can set that anywhere from two to five, 10, 15, or never. Okay. And where did you go in to put that? Does it wear your battery down if you put never? No. Well, yeah, because it, 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 it's not powered. Yeah. And there's actually kind of two pieces of that. We'll, Get to that in just a minute. Where the, what's the, I mean, the advantages of locking it? Size. Uh, well, particularly if you have a passcode lock on it, if you happen to leave it sitting somewhere, uh, someone picks it up, they can't get into it. Technically. 
the better, the less. So what do you mean? Um, if, if I'm around in schools and that, I don't lock mine. I keep mine at five minutes. Okay? I also don't keep a password lock when I'm around the schools because I'm in and out of it so much. And Keenan, that password drives me nuts. If I'm going out in the public net, though, I will throw a password lock on it. And so I'm going to hit the password lock screen here. And I turn the passcode on. And it asks me to enter a passcode. Make it out. Is this and it asked me to re-enter it. That's why I'm like, oh. <laughs> if you leave it on the bus, we have a passcode. Nobody can get in to find you. We'll we'll get to that probably next week. Okay. Where are we at? Well, right now, I can't get my email. Is that? Do no, that has nothing to do with that. We'll look at that. Okay, um, with passcodes. So I'm going to switch my device off now, or put it to sleep. Then I'm going to put it back up. Now when I go to slide that lock, it asks for my passcode. Okay. You went back to general? Yeah, I'm back in general. Sorry. And I'm going to go back in the passcode because there are two kinds of passcodes. There's a simple passcode. And I'd recommend probably just sticking with that because uh, it, it just requires a four-digit number. If you turn off simple passcode, it'll let you put in basically about any password you want. Okay, so. Where did you go to simple passcode? What's that? So we need the passcode locked off for now. It's totally up to you. Yeah. So if I want, so I'm going to turn my passcode off because, like I said, when I'm around in the school, I in and out so much. I'm just going to tap turn off. I put in the password, and now the passcode's off. So that's auto locked. What do you do? Auto locked one. What's that? Auto locked one. I leave mine on five minutes. Just you make it up. You make it up. Right. And make it simple. Can it be the same as your email? No. Okay, um, there are a few more settings. For example, date and time. Um, it should, you should be set to automatically. Okay. Uh, set the time zone. Again, that's done automatically. It's based on location. Okay. And so that you shouldn't have to set. Um, there are some keyboard controls like that you can turn on and off, like auto capitalization, correction, uh, spelling check, caps lock. So where is that? I am in uh, in general under keyboard. So swipe swipe up. So how do you get keyboard? This part, this up on settings, but how do you get back to the regular? Oh, right there. There's not a keyboard. If I had an international keyboard, how's that? Do I just switch to um, two that's a question I don't know yet. <laughs> it looks like you just you can just add whatever you want, and then they're both available. And I'd imagine that you can switch between the two. Okay. Okay. On our, I'm in the general because I've got the list of people that there's not a keyboard on there. Okay. So swipe. So on that side, in general, swipe up, and you'll see some more options down there. All right. Thanks. I missed that step. Okay, so there's keyboard. Um, that period shortcut, you see about the fifth one down here, you've got capitalization, etc. The period shortcut, what that does is if you enter a period, or not, not if you enter a period, if you get the end of a sentence, if you just tap the space bar twice, it automatically inserts a period, puts in a space, and sets the caps to start a new sentence. Okay? So I leave that on, I use that. I, I'd die with that. Uh, Where's that in there? Under keyboard. So, swipe up. Oh, there you go. So, if you want these, no, if it says on, they're already on. You can also ship, you can also set shortcuts. Ooh, you're recording. Yeah. I said, this is a stupid week for me. I'm doing a lot of stupid things. Same lot. <laughs> okay. You can add your own shortcuts. So if there's something you type all the time, 
and you don't want to spell out. For, so, for example, if uh, I didn't want to have to spell Oak Hollow out all the time, I could come in here and put uh, Oak Hollow, and then make the shortcut A O K H. Okay. Then whenever I type now O K H, it's gonna put in Oak Hollow, Tulo, Hulao. Let me fix that. Like I said, not my week. Okay. At the very bottom. Okay. And, and I think I'm going to stop there for today. Okay. Uh, because I want to hit accessibility separately because there's some really cool things with the accessibility features that I, that I want to cover next week. And uh, so we're out of time.